Welcome to Passion Unlimited Podcast. I am your host, psychotherapist, author, and founder of Fearless Love, Gianni Adamo. Do you know that anger, tension, and conflict are part of a healthy relationship? Did, but did you know that how you argue can predict a future breakup or divorce? In today's episode, I will be discussing communication mistakes that no longer serves us and are disrupting your intimacy. And it can also lead to a relationship meltdown. Stay tuned, grab a piece of paper and pen so that you can go from surviving to thriving in life, love, and relationships. So welcome to another episode of Passion Unlimited Podcast. We are on season three. And we are on a relationship reboot series. I have focused this whole season just to help you recalibrate your relationship. And every week I am releasing a new podcast or a new episode on different topics, such as communication, intimacy, connection, companionship, and passion, all to help you to not only survive this pandemic and survive this season of your life, but to move to the next season in, in a place that you're both satisfied and happy with what you guys are creating together. Okay, and this is for all, for everybody, men and women, for singles and couples. So if you are single and don't have a partner, please tune in because everything that I'm teaching you, you can learn as a single person so that when you are dating, when you are in a relationship, you've already started to master the right skill sets to maintain that relationship healthy. Okay, so very good. So what is the purpose of marriage and what is the purpose of love, okay? Here, what happens is in marriage and in love, two people come together and generally there's an attraction. There's this physiological response that happens and we become attracted to one another and there's this chemistry that goes off and usually what happens is two people who have similar woundings from childhood or from young adult years and that have not yet been resolved will end up having some really interesting chemistry the fireworks usually can go off for them and they'll usually get married or they'll live together or they end up you know in a relationship what has happened though is that even though you both may have been wounded in similar ways, you both have responded to the wounding in opposite direction or different in different ways. Thus, you feel like, oh my God, it's the opposite, it's a trap. But at the end of the day, if we pull things apart, there's actually gonna be a lot of similarities around the two of you that pulled you together. Not only, it's, so there's this wounding that's very similar, it's just how you responded to the wounding. Okay, so staying open to the influence of your partner is what your partner is saying to you, what they're wanting from you is actually drawing you closer to being able to open yourself up to areas of your life that have been shut down. How about that? Your partners, when they're arguing with you and they're fighting with you, they're usually pointing at a part of your life that's been cut off from you that you, in order to survive whatever you had to survive in childhood or young adult years, shut it down. And your partner needs that part of you in the relationship to feel whole and complete with you. So they will fight with you, okay? So basically, these are parts of our lives that we need to be reintegrated or reclaimed to support our journey to wholeness. So the secret here is that I wanna tell you is that by staying committed, to loving your partner, to loving your spouse as yourself, that can truly help us reach our fullest potential. No career, no financial success or contribution that we made to this world will impact your personal development greater than who you choose to love over and over again every single day, right? Um, and stay committed to that love. So what this means is that you, when you love and when you are married, you are going to 
um, bump, bump heads, you are going to grind. You're going to rub each other the wrong way every so often because these are opportunities for growth. This is nature saying, look, this, these are areas that you need to grow in. These are areas that you need to reveal and expose to yourself more and embrace because they have been disconnected. But so many people have immature communication styles. So then we get stuck of hurting each other, bombarding each other with abuse, really, instead of enlightening and supporting and helping and influencing our partner, we're being like pushed down and we're made to feel worse about ourselves. So these are the types of things that I want us to be aware of and mindful so that we can learn and mature in our communication skills so that we can um, get out of the old communication patterns that have come up from our family of origin and how we survived them. So instead of continuing those communication cells that served us well, hopefully to survive, but they're no longer serving us in our intimate adult relationships, okay? So in today's episode, I hope to clarify some of the communication mistakes that you are making right now that are causing disconnection and perpetuating fights, okay? And, and even some, and many times even emotionally or mentally or verbally abusing our partners because we don't have another set of skills that are more mature and more sophisticated than what we were given and learned in our childhood. I will also give you some tips on how to stop these uh, styles of communication and I will also give you some um, alternatives. What, what can you do? How can you replace these things, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, so I titled our today's topic, Stop Making These Communication Mistakes and Improve Your Intimacy Right Now, okay? So the first um, communication mistake that a lot of people make is this harsh startup. Okay, so the minute you've been triggered and now you're upset, you were disappointed because what you had asked for, what you had expected, what you wanted um, were not, was not delivered. So, you know, so partner A, whoever you are, let's say you're the woman, you have been triggered and now you're upset that um, the dinner wasn't ready when you came home and then you still have to do the homework with your children or whatever the situation is. There's like a whole bunch of stuff that needs to get done. And so anyways, here, the harsh startup basically is you start with criticism or an attack of your partner. And, or all of a sudden you just start yelling out of the blue and the person just doesn't even know what happened, okay? So a harsh start, startup is usually going to trigger your partner. There's nothing that's gonna make somebody else more upset when, they're approached by being attacked, okay? Nobody wants to hear you always, you never, what's the matter with you at the beginning of a conversation <laughs> because that's gonna put the other person on the defense, okay? And in fact, most people, one of their greatest fear is to be criticized. Most people don't wanna be criticized. We run from criticism. We don't wanna be humiliated for being wrong or for failing. So these are some of the situations that um, that's happening. So when you have a harsh startup, you're triggering your partner, you're triggering one of their fears. So they can't even hear you, okay? So they're actually just thinking about how to defend themselves. Um, so we wanna avoid starting up conversations or, or even a confrontation with a harsh startup. What you want to do instead, okay, you want to take a deep breath. You want to understand, okay, that now you've been triggered and you're feeling angry or fr frustrated or upset or overwhelmed. You want to name your emotion. So this is all you self-containing your distress, okay? You don't want to dump your distress onto your partner. You want to understand what's happening with you first. Then you can ask your partner if they, they have a moment because you're feeling overwhelmed in this moment and you would like their help. Okay, that's all. 
look, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I just walked in through the house. The dishes are all piled up. The, the living room is a mess. Uh, the bathrooms haven't been tidied and the, and the laundry room is full of, you know, stuff. So you're completely overwhelmed. So you can just say, hey, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Do you have a moment? I would like to speak with you so that we can resolve this issue if you can help me. Okay. Um, the other thing I would recommend is when you have to share something that you were very upset about is, or something that is very important to the relationship and to you, is to try to have the conversation if possible. If it can wait, I would say give it a few minutes, give it even like an hour and have a meal, have a snack. If you're needing to eat dinner first and have your dinner, if you're not having a meal yet, then just have a snack. Make sure that your blood sugars are leveled and, and make sure that your partner as well. You don't want to have a strong conversation that can be triggering for both of you on an empty stomach. The hangry thing doesn't work. <laughs> That's just going to keep you lo looped up in a negative cycle. That's what we're trying to avoid. Okay. So when we, you know, instead of having that harsh startup of it by attacking or criticizing, we take control of ourselves, we understand what we're feeling and why we're feeling this. We ask our partner for a conversation. We make sure that everybody has had a snack or a meal. So you kind of schedule them around that or you just drink some water, have some orange juice or something to kind of level yourself out a little. And, and then you start out with affirming your partner or providing an intention. My intention is, for us to connect around the children and their, you know, schedule. My intention is to talk about, you know, your parents and the fact that they're coming over and wanting to spend two weeks with us. Uh, my intention here is to come together with you as a team. See this? As a team. That's an intention that will bridge us. So you want to state your intentions and affirm your love or affirm you know, that once again, you're trying to come to this as for a resolution and trying to come to this in peace. You could also um, compliment your partner for something before you give the complaint so that they know that you're on the same team, that you guys are on the same page. Okay, so then you present the behavior or the situation that you're looking for some change. And then you stay away from not, you don't want to criticize the partner. So basically here you can say, instead of saying, why are you so forgetful? You can never help me with anything and you don't care about me. That would be a criticism. Okay. You want to stay away from those statements. Those are very negative, harsh statements, but you can, you can actually say a complaint, which is, you know, I'm really upset about you, you know, uh, not speaking to your parents uh, last night. And, you know, now I feel like this is falling back on me, the fact that they're coming for two weeks and I really cannot take on any more responsibilities and I could only handle one week with them here. So I really would like for you to speak to them and see if one week would work for them, okay? So that's you now presenting your complaint instead of saying, you know, you don't listen, you don't care, you never, you know, follow through on what we discuss or whatever the situation is. You present what it is that you're feeling and what you would like, and how you would like things resolved. Okay. The second thing that I would want you to avoid is defensiveness oh my goodness and i know the guys are really you guys rank so high with this and like every time somebody questions you you come back with a million and one rationalization excuses justifications and then there's sarcasm that people think it's actually fun or cute um, or appropriate and it's not not in a personal relationship Sarcasm is based on anger and not you are dishing your anger on your partner in a kind of in a very uh, passive aggressive way and making your partner the butt of the joke. That doesn't work. So again, we want to stay away from all defensiveness, all rationalizations, all excusing, all sarcasm, and all justifications. 
when we are trying to communicate something that's important to us, um, when we're trying to just connect with our partner, because when we use those types and styles of communication, what you're saying actually in a way is, I am right and you are wrong. So you are just basically blaming your partner. Um, so you're saying the problem is you and your reaction to what I am doing and it's not me. So again, once we pick sides like that, we're basically taking like a gun and shooting a boat that we're both standing in. And basically the boat is your relationship and it's going down. So we don't want to choose to be right. We want to choose peace. When we choose to go into defensiveness, we're going into a lose-lose paradigm, okay? Because we are alienating the partner. So in order to choose a win-win is we edit, okay? We edit all rationalization. We edit, take your scissors and cut them out of your vocabulary, all excuses all sarcasm, all justifications, and all rationalization, you don't need one of them for effective communication. Not one of them is needed for effective communication. When someone needs to, needs to hear what was your rationale for doing X, Y, and Z, they will ask you, or you could ask them, would you like to hear why I did not call my parents last night? And what's gonna happen is you're gonna find out that they actually had a headache or a stomach ache or that a text was sent by the sister to communicate something else that needs more time before your husband or your wife can call the parents. You see this? Instead of us jumping to the conclusion that they just didn't follow through because they don't care, and that's usually what we feel, I know, I know we all suffer from that. But if we can pause the attacks, if we can pause the defensiveness and edit all of this stuff, what we're gonna find out is the truth and that they're still willing to work with us. Our partners are still wanting to work with us and, and find a happy medium here. Okay, so instead of being defensive, I want you to choose peace over being right. Because for those of you who are always looking for these rational rationales and logics and excuses and, and stuff like that and justifications, you kind of, you have this need to be right attitude. So lose the need to be right attitude and gain the I am choosing peace or being right attitude because you're going to save peace in the home. And who the heck doesn't want to be living in a peaceful home? I don't know because your home should be very sacred and it should be a safe harbor for everyone, not only for the two of you, but your children, your parents who come to visit, family and friends as we welcome them back into our lives as we are reopening our lives past this pandemic. Okay. The negativity, number three thing that we get stuck in that creates all this immature, um, ineffective style of communication in my book is negativity. Okay, that means every time your partner approaches you for any new idea, something creative and new possibilities, you always come back to them and you're like, no, no, your, your immediate response is no. Can you go to Home Depot and get the, you know, toilet seat that broke? No. Can you do this or this? no? And it's like, but then like an hour later, there you go. You go take care of the situation and then you come back and you're happy to luck and you do what the partner said. Okay. So maybe you can edit your negativity here for those of you who are so negative. And I know a lot of that negativity is coming from anxiety disorders, even though no one diagnosed you with an anxiety disorder. But for, for most part, for those of you who are always on the no and everything's no, you're dealing with anxieties, a chronic anxiety, maybe it's low grade. So you've never had to take anxiety medication and maybe you've never been to the therapist, but most likely you're dealing with some sort of chronic uh, uh, anxiety disorder um, that just always filters the world with a big no <laughs> and nothing's coming in. But when you're filtering everything as a no, it's extremely heavy for your partner. And so every time, like I said, your partner introduces a new concept or a new desire that you have not into, like entered into your uh, mindset already, you always respond with no. And it's you want to go to school? I don't think you'll like it. Um, I don't think you should go to school for that. Whatever it is, it's always like met with a no. It won't work. We need to lose that negativity because it's very heavy for your partner to have to live their life with a person who is the Debbie Downer. And 
you, what you want in place of that is you want to be a supporter. You want to be an encourager. Okay. So that's the attitude you want to take on in your home with your children, with your spouse. And it doesn't mean that they're going to do every idea that comes to their heads because yeah, some of it is just like you're wasting money and I get it and you're wasting time. But then sometimes we do need to, especially the artists, we need to be lost for a while for our creativity to finally like click. So we need to allow time and space for exploration, to fail, to begin over again. Um, yeah, we want to watch how much money we're investing in these hobbies or things that we want to do, but we want to give people some ample space for exploration. So I also want you to ask your partner first before offering your assessment of what your partner has introduced to you, because if you are an individual who is always on the negative, your partner wants to hear the support first and what makes sense to you first before you offer like the 101 reasons why their idea is not going to work and how their dreams are a little poo-pooed. Nobody wants to hear that. So offer, ask first before giving your assessment. Make sure that they're ready because sometimes they just need to hear an encouraging word. And then in a day or two, that whole idea is going to pass because they realize, yeah, you're, that's not going to work. You know, but if they're asking you, you know, for a real opinion, then that's when you give them your real opinion. Okay, and then the fourth thing that um, we are doing that's a huge mistake that's deteriorating our intimacy is called stonewalling. And stonewalling happens when one partner stops the communication and they just tune out. The stonewaller acts as if he or she doesn't care about what you are saying and is turning away from the partner instead of turning towards you. And they're doing this in order to avoid a fight. But in reality, they are avoiding their relationship with you. And if that's you, then you are avoiding your relationship. So when a partner, let's just say you're the stonewaller. So when your partner wants to talk to you, if you are not ready to have a, like a, an important conversation or a strong topic or a complaint or whatever, then let them know when you are going to be available. So that's the first thing. And if um, you have a stonewaller in your relationship, you definitely probably need to go into therapy to get them turned back on and towards you and to help you repair the relationship because stonewalling is like the final stage before people file for divorce. So if you are seeing that, then divorce is probably coming or the breakup is coming very quickly or it's gonna happen eventually. So you probably definitely need to call myself or another therapist who specializes in, in relationships and in marriage work so that you can turn this around because it's gonna take some time to turn this behavior around to open each other, to open up your hearts again and move away from the resentment and the, just the, you know, like just the whole disconnection that you're almost like in a place of complete of emotional abandonment from this person. So there's a lot of problems that are layered and in, in, in involved when you're in this relationship now with someone who's stonewalling. Okay, so um, so if you are the stonewaller and you have more control because you're listening to this podcast, I want you to use eye contact. I want you to be able to nod when the person says something that you agree. I want you to say, yeah, aha, uh -huh, okay, I understand. I want you to mirror some of the things that they're saying because that says now that you're re-engaged in this conversation and you're re-engaged in, in your relationship. All right, and like the, the last point that I wanna make about communications uh, mistakes is to, to just as simple as this one, it's just not listening. People are always preparing a, a rebuttal don't repair, don't prepare your rebuttal. Just listen. There has been many times that I have to listen to things in my personal life that I don't agree with a hundred percent. And I think that's why we try to um, create these rebuttals. We want to preempt, we want to cut to the chase, but in truth, we're being disrespectful. So just listen, even if you don't agree, offer this person the gift of listening. 
when we listen, what happens is we avoid flooding our partner with all that negativity, with the criticism and the contempt and the defensiveness, and it actually shows respect for our partner. So it gives us the opportunity for two people not being triggered to actually come together to try to resolve their differences. And the best gift you can give your partner is the gift of listening and understanding. There is no money in the world that can compensate us for how much that means to all of us to have someone who can hear without criticizing, without judgment, that we can expose our vulnerable parts, we can expose our hopes and dreams, and they're actually being encouraged or they're being understood. That is priceless. So I want to just recap um, today's um, episode on Passion Unlimited podcast. We are focusing in on a relationship reboot series. And today's focus has been on eliminating or stopping these communication mistakes that are um, interrupting our intimacy. And by just stopping these communication mistakes, we can improve our intimacy right now. Okay. So you can listen to this podcast again, and you could also listen to the podcast prior to this one, which was on how to get what you want from your partnership or your relationship, because those are the, the positive communication styles that you should be using instead of these to get what you want. Please subscribe to Passion Unlimited Podcast through whatever podcast network you listen to. And I should now be on YouTube under uh, Fearless Love, one word. And um, you can comment, you can watch me record these episodes um, live on, on, on YouTube. They're not live on YouTube, but they're live as I'm recording them. Please comment, please let me know if, you, if this makes sense, if you have questions. Uh, patterns that you're noticing in your relationship that you want me to address, I would be happy to address all that. And you can follow me on social media at, you could uh, follow me on Instagram um, at Gianni Adamo, and that's J-I-A-N-N-Y, A-D-A-M-O. And then I have a Facebook group called Passion Unlimited Podcast. And you can also contact me if you want therapy or coaching, I am available and I'm providing telehealth counseling. Um, my website to reach me is fearlesslove.net. All right, so stay tuned for next week. We are going to continue on this series to help you reboot your relationship and your communication styles and help you with conflict resolution and increase intimacy and connection. All right, till next time.